Hello my loves, it's that time of year again where I finished my old bullet journal so it's time to migrate into a new journal for the rest of 2022 and here she is in all of her glory. Like usual I purchased an A5 notebook from Archer and Olive and I believed it's named the Time for Tea notebook which is adorable. Um, it has a strap, a pen holder, a pocket in the back, 160 GSM pages and this particular journal also has gilded gold edges so honestly it's an honor just to be able to use it for the rest of the year. I recently hit 2000 subs on my channel and I'm so thankful to all of you so I am hosting a giveaway with this video. Video, stick around to the end and I'll show you how to win some stationery. With that being said, let's crack open this journal and start setting her up by writing Mingo on the front cover. This is always like such an exciting little experience. Technically I've been sketching in this journal for days, but the first day I get to put some ink down is always very exciting. Mingo is not to be confused with my actual name Sophie, but Mingo is my nickname and the name of my channel, so that's what I will be labeling this journal with. Speaking of names, I used to name my bullet journals, but I never ended up naming the first one from the beginning of 2022 because it's always such a stressful endeavor. So comment below name ideas if you want me to name either this journal or my old maroon one. But honestly, who knows if I'm going to do that because it's kind of simple leaving them just nameless, like green 2022 journal, <laughs> if you know what I mean. So I always like to skip past the first page in the bullet journal because it is pasted in weird and doesn't fully open. So let's just skip through that one and jump right into the cover page. I actually decided to do some drawing for my hit pages in the journal. If you know me at all or you're used to my channel and you've seen some of my old bullet journal setups before, you know that I usually like to keep things minimal in my beginning spreads and if anything I always make a pack of stickers to decorate and that way it's easier to make all of the spreads. However, I had a really cool idea in this particular setup so I decided to sketch out all of my spreads and draw them myself instead of using stickers and also just because there were a lot less spreads to set up because this is a mid-year bullet journal setup and not just a beginning of the year one so it actually wasn't that hard. If you are interested I did set up my beginning of the year bullet journal for 2022. There's an entire video for that and it'll definitely be linked down below in the description box if you want to go check it out. This video is just to second bullet journal because I ran out of space in my old one and so I just need to remind myself of a couple pages but it's not going to be nearly in depth as that video was. So as you can probably tell as I'm drawing out this page in ink, my theme idea was lace. Now this is inspired by a multi people Journal Away which I will talk about her later and also Leela Journals. They are both amazing bullet journalers and I think I've seen them both use lace in their bullet journal and I think it's just super pretty and I've always wanted to try it but I've been intimidated by the thought. However, I I used inspiration pictures from Pinterest like I always do for my drawings because I'm not good at drawing everything so I got to know what to look at and I think it really helped me to understand the curves of lace and like how to draw the detailed edges without being so overly detailed that it takes forever to draw. As you can see I'm basically just drawing loops and paisleys and even the lines aren't completely filled in or matching it's just a little bit of sketchiness and that kind of helps make it look more whimsical and doodly and it doesn't have to be perfect but it still looks really cute. I also will say it was very therapeutic to draw this lace because I'm literally just drawing the same pattern multiple times and although a little infuriating to sketch once I had the basic pencil down it was really nice to just listen to a YouTube video and film this and just draw little doodles over my entire bullet journal theme. Like I mentioned earlier I usually used stickers to decorate all of my bullet journal setups in the past but I did not this month. However that being said if you guys would like I can make a sticker sheet out of all these lace drawings. I think they are a little bit complicated to draw unless you know how to like copy from picture you know so as always if you have any other ideas for stickers that you want me to make in the future, always comment them down below because I see all of your comments and I love to get some new ideas. So I decided to bring in a little bit of green into my setup, although lace is usually just like white and creamy, but I decided to add green anyway because it needed a little bit of color and the green kind of tied in with the cover page. So it worked well and I think it's very cohesive with the cover of the journal. Okay, let's move on to the grid spacing cheat sheet. Now you may have heard of this, you may not have heard of this. It's kind of a bullet journal technical term, I suppose. Many people use this in their bullet journal to help measure box sizes for future spreads. So the concept is you number all of the boxes on both sides, horizontally and vertically across the spread, and then use the dot grid to measure how many spaces tall or wide each box has to be if you're dividing the spread into halves, thirds, quarters, etc. Now this can be really helpful in the future when you're making spreads and say you need to divide a spread into four to make a weekly spread. Instead of counting out all the boxes, you already have a reference sheet right here that you can just go to so you know exactly how much space you need. Now this can differ based on a lot of things and that's why it's really hard to make a template for something like this because depending on, for example, the size of your notebook, like if you have an A5 or a B5, an A4, a square, a traveler's notebook, like all these different notebooks are going to have lots of different dimensions and so it all depends on what journal you're using. Another thing can be personal preference, like how many spaces do you want between each box? Do you want 
any space between each box. Like, do you want them just to be lines and make a T-chart instead of having boxes? Or how wide do you want the page's margins to be on the edges of the bullet journal? Or even how do you count the spaces? Like, for example, there might be an even amount of spaces in the margins, so would you rather move the boxes closer to the border or closer to the inside of the journal? It's really all up to you. And that's why it's super hard to explain how to make something like this because it's all changing. But I'm going to put here on the screen my personal dimensions for both an A5 and B5 journals, so feel free to screenshot but again it's just my personal preference and I'm sorry that I haven't tried out any other journals so I can't tell you my sizes for them. That was a lot to think about though so if you need me to explain anything in more depth just comment down below and I will do my best to help you out. And I also have an entire playlist about starting a bullet journal for the first time so if you're new to the bullet journaling realm then that playlist will definitely be linked down below in the description box because I know that spreads like this might be very intimidating if you're just starting out. If you aren't familiar with my channel I do make a bullet journal plan with me videos every month and in fact my July I plan with me is coming next Saturday so don't forget to go down and subscribe to my channel so you won't miss when that video comes out. Okay so we're already on the quote page and I basically picked this quote and it says perhaps you were born for such a time as this and it's actually a bible verse which is lovely it's Esther 414 but I also really think it relates to my life at this moment so I thought it was a good reminder to keep in the front of my journal. I also decided to add washi tape to my beginning bullet journal setup which I usually never do but here's my dilemma you see the green slash gray color that I used well it's it's originally labeled as gray, but I think Zebra messed up. I'll put a video here on the screen, but the ink that I'm using comes out as green, as you can see on the spread. So anyway, but that was a very cool tone color, and I also had a lot of blacks and grays, of course, so I wanted to add more warmth into the spread. So I used a sort of greenish brown washi tape and a washi tape with gold to kind of match the gilded edges on the edges of the bullet journal. Wow, okay, this video is going by so fast, but we are already in the future log. Now this is another kind of technical term, but think of it as just like an overview for the next six or 12, maybe even 18 months in your life. Like I said, this bullet journal is only for the second half of 2022, so I'm only labeling the calendar from July the 7th month to December the 12th month, but we'll get into that in a second. Let's talk about this lace at the top of the spread. Maybe it's boring just to do a border like this, but it was just super therapeutic to draw, and I also think that the lace kind of dangling down over the future log is really dainty and pretty, so yeah. Besides, I actually re-sketched these spreads like three times before I settled on the final layout, so I'm not even going to change anything about it. Like I mentioned earlier, my theme for this setup is inspired by Lena Journals and Journal Away. And Journal Away is a YouTuber who draws these intricate designs and they're so lovely. And so I was definitely inspired by her patience to draw and how much effort she put into her doodles whenever I was designing this theme. It looks intimidating to draw all this lace, but a tip is to take it one element at a time. As you can see, what I'm doing here is I'm starting with all the flowers and going across the entire page. And then I'm circling back to the beginning and doing all the loops. And then I'm gonna go back again and draw the little curving at the bottom and just by doing things in little steps and going back and taking it bit by bit it just makes such a huge and complicated drawing easier to comprehend and easier to ink onto the page at least that was what helped me doing it so if you're looking to do something and like recreate this bullet journal setup or something like that then one tag me because I would love to see it but two don't forget to take things in little steps that way it's a little easier for you guys to draw I'll put a couple inspiration pictures that I used from Pinterest here on the screen and as always if you want to check out my Pinterest and see what kind of bullet journal inspiration I'm finding and saving and that's always linked in the description box below if you're interested. So I won't lie, I do use my calendar in my phone along with Notion for a lot of future planning. Like I have birthdays in my calendar, I use Notion for a lot of content planning and stuff like that. And to be honest, maybe it's not being a good bullet journaler, but I rarely use my future log. But I know that writing on paper helps you remember things a lot better, but it's also good for when I'm filling in my monthly bullet journal calendars just to flip back at the beginning of my bullet journal and check out a couple dates that I may have missed and just add those to the calendars. Um, I usually use my future log to plan birthdays and exam days mostly, which is why I've actually divided this spread at the bottom into two different rows. I don't know if you can see it because it's still in pencil, but I have the personal row at the top and the school row at the bottom, and that's just basically going to be used to plan out any games I have to go to for color guard, any AP exams and other large exams for my last senior year. And then also in the personal section, I have all basically my birthdays that I need to remember. I haven't tried out this new layout before, but hopefully by dividing my events into two different areas, they can help me kind of categorize the different things that are happening in the rest of 2022. Now, as you can see, I'm taking forever to write out all of these calendars, but on my sticker shop, I do have these calendar stickers that you can purchase. I have them for 2022 and they're in both Monday start and Sunday start. And I will definitely make a new updated version next year for 2023. So if you're looking to grab these, they are on my Etsy shop as always. One thing I did want to chat about as I finish up the spread are some changes that are coming to my content. So I've been talking about this a lot on my Instagram and occasionally on my community tab, but basically, 
hopefully I want to change my content just a little bit so I know that I can continue making content that you guys enjoy. I'm debating, for example, doing future videos that might include me setting up my mother's bullet journal since I already do it, but I might want to do it on camera now. Something like that. You know, I'm just debating different video ideas. And then also outside of YouTube, I am definitely planning on moving my Etsy shop to another platform because Etsy's rates are through the roof. So I just want to let you guys know that way you'll be aware of that transition coming soon. As always, all updates are going to be on my Instagram, so make sure to just check me out over there if you want to see what's up with my business and what's happening currently. I spent so long debating whether or not to add the lines at the bottom of the page because it's not centered and it does not keep the page as minimal as I wanted it to be, but I think I'm glad I did because it brings some color to the bottom of the pages and some balance, which is always important. So this spread is pretty much done and let's move in to probably the most important page of this entire setup, which is the goals check-in. Now, I believe that goals are just so important. I usually do quarterly goals actually, so having me start this bullet journal in July was a perfect time for some mid-year re-evaluation. I'll get to that in a second. The lace on this page is a little different and I'm trying to find the word for it in my head. Um, I guess, okay, so the beginning lace that I did for the rest of the spreads are more light and dainty and loopy, right? There are all these different swirls and hoops, but on this page I tried more of like a heavy floral pattern, I think, more like elemental, maybe like, okay, Think of Art Nouveau in the late 19th and early 20th century that might be closer to what I'm trying to explain here, but you can kind of see the difference. They're like huge flowers and more detail and the stems between the flowers have all these swirls on them, but it's like a more of a paisley swirl than like the teardrops I was doing before. Maybe I'm thinking too much into this, but to me, the lace is different, okay? And I'll put some pictures here on the screen to kind of demonstrate what I was thinking whenever I was sketching the spread. Now you may be wondering, Sophie, why did you just decide to change up the lace randomly through the middle of the set? Up. Well, I want to try something different because I was really enjoying drawing them, but also I think that it doesn't actually clash with the other spreads. I think that the style of lace still kind of is cohesive with the style of the other spreads, and here's why. For one, I think it's because of how I've colored the lace, which I've actually yet to mention. For all of the lace, no matter on what page it's been, as, as you've probably seen, I've taken out the green, gray, whatever color that pen is, and colored in just some of the little details to pull some color out of the spread because they were looking a little minimal, and then I also use a light gray to add some shadow in the creases of the lace, so to speak. Not really very realistic creases. Like if I was trying, I'd think of a light source and put the shadows on the other side of the light source and something like that. Basically, I was just sketching the gray underneath the darker parts of petals or whatever I wanted, but it makes it look a little less 2D, as I'm trying to say. So because I used the same tactic on all of the spreads, no matter what type of lace I was drawing, I think it kind of pulled the spreads together and made it look rather cohesive. And another reason the lace difference doesn't take away from the consistency of the theme is because the rest of the page is so heavily similar to the others. Like the color palette is obviously the same. The layout and minimal style is very much the same. The calligraphy style, the way that I really didn't have many boxes but left a lot of open space. Like the whole general idea of all the spreads are very similar. So even though I'm drawing a completely different type of lace, I feel like it still fits in with the theme. Everything I just said sounded like really weird actually. So I really hope that made sense. As always, ask any questions you want, but I am thinking possibly about making an entire video about being consistent with your bullet journal and your bullet journaling themes, making them cohesive with each other. So if you want me to do something like that, then let me know and I definitely will. Okay, as I finish up the spread, let's talk about goal setting. Now I'm not a professional or anything, but I've talked about this on my channel before and I always try to make sure my goals are SMART, S-M-A-R-T. If you don't know that acronym, I'll put it here on the screen, but basically they're just things that you need to keep in mind when you're making goals to make sure they're realistic and achievable and timely and manageable, stuff like that. Another thing is especially now in the middle of the year, I wanna do less goal setting and more reevaluating. I'm just going to check in on my old goals Goals, see my progress, how realistic they were, and maybe tweak a few more, but just refocus where my attention needs to be for the next few months because I don't need to be setting new goals every three months if I haven't even hit the ones that I set for the entire year, right? I just want to kind of check in with myself and see how I'm doing, how far I am along my goals that I set at the beginning of the year and see what else I need to focus on. I divided this spread into personal, content, and external. You know, personal is like relationship and self stuff. Content is obviously like my business, my social media, and external is more like school and and future stuff like academic goals so I actually cannot find a better name than external maybe academic would be the thing to go but then also I'm thinking about college and like credit cards also go in that section so like maybe miscellaneous I don't know but dividing it into the three different categories definitely helps me to prioritize my goals a little better well, I'm just a little bit out of breath but we are finally on the last page and yet again we are starting with a lace border on the top of the spread can you tell this is a style that I actually just love doing so much similarly to the future log but I actually added so much 
more detail on this lace, I was really getting into the groove of it, y'all. I couldn't stop drawing, basically doing the same thing that we did before. I was debating posting like tutorials on how I draw this lace on like my reels or YouTube shorts or something, but like I've mentioned, I just kind of went with my gut and with the help of my inspiration picks, I just added swirls and loops until I liked it. I don't know, I feel like y'all are pretty competent. You can draw this lace all on your own. So now while I'm finishing up this little doodle section, let's talk about the two different trackers that I have on this page. So these are trackers that I always put my bullet journal and as you'll see in a second, there is literally no reason to, but I just love using them. So on the left is going to be my reading tracker for the rest of the year and on the right is going to be my period tracker. So I am a huge book nerd. If you don't know this about me, I love books. I'm constantly reading, but 90% of the time I am reading romance. So hit me up if you want some romance recs because I've read like every romance genre and I probably have something for you. I love tracking my reading and knowing what books I was reading at what point in the year. So I like just having a simple chart over here to put the number, the book name, the rating I give it, and then if I've written a review for it. Also, I'm a person who menstruates. So on the right, I do have an entire period tracker. Basically, I just have very simple dots that go all the way down to number each of the days of the month. For example, January's column has 31 dots, you know, put two and two together. And I'll just very simply circle the days that I'm on my period. And that's literally it. It does take forever to make, but I think it's such a pretty spread. Ironically though, these spreads are not very detailed and they are actually almost useless because I have apps for both of these trackers on my phone. <laughs> so I don't track period symptoms on this page because it's on my phone. And I also have a Goodreads and Storygraph account, which they both linked below if you're interested. And that's where I track all of my book ratings and reviews. And by the way, yes, I do try to review all of the books that I read, which is why I have a check mark there to see if I reviewed them. Um, and I think it's just a super fun way to kind of go back and see what you're reading, but just this way it's digitized so that in case, God forbid, this bullet journal happens to get lost or stolen or burn in a fire or something. Oh, knock on wood. Let's, let's never do that, but I will still know what books I was reading in 2022. One other thing that the app Goodreads and Storygraph does is track a reading challenge. So I currently have a reading challenge of reading like 50 books in this year. So hopefully I get to finish that. I did it last year, so I'm hoping I can do it again. I'm pretty sure I can do it again. I know that a lot of you guys who watch my channel are just as much of a book nerd as I am. If you have any book recommendations for me or you want book recommendations or just want to chat about some favorite books, let's do so because I love chatting about books. Recently, I just finished It Happened One Summer by Tessa Bailey which everyone was talking about reading and I never actually got around to it because I thought it was going to be cheesy and boring, but it was actually really good. I think I gave it like four stars. So if you're looking for a really good romance, that would be one to check out. Um, I just ate a brownie, so hopefully there's nothing in my teeth. Before we get on to the flip through, I did want to talk about what you guys have probably been waiting for and that is the giveaway portion of this video. I just hit 2,000 subscribers on YouTube, which I'm very thankful for and I want to show you all how much I love and appreciate you guys. So I'm hosting yet another giveaway on my YouTube channel. There are going to be three winners and if you win, the giveaway, you get a couple of free sheets from my Etsy shop along with a 25% off discount on my shop for the next year. Now, if you happen to be the main winner, my number one, then you get an even better prize, basically. So I'm going to be giving you my beginner bullet journal essentials kit. In this kit, you're going to get all the different things you need to start a bullet journal. You're going to get some washi tape. You're going to get some stencils. You're gonna get some stickers, more stickers. You're going to get a black pen, because everyone needs a trusty black pen, a whole pack of colored fine liners, and of course, your one and only bullet journal. This one is gray, minimal, so clean and simple. It has the straps, it has thick pages, and there's actually an index along with numbered pages. So if you're one of those girlies who likes their pages numbered, this bullet journal is perfect for you. And on top of all that, you get the discount on my shop and the free stickers, all the good stuff, really. The question is, how do you win all of these goodies? Well, there are only a couple requirements. Okay, I got you, don't you worry. The first thing is you have to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And the second thing is, on this video, go down to the comment section below, comment some sparkle emojis if you're able to do so, and also comment your Instagram handle so that I can contact you if you win. If for some reason you don't have an Instagram account, which valid, then go down and comment the sparkles, but like email me with the business email linked down in the description box. That way I can still contact you if you happen to win. And if you want some extra entries in my giveaway, you can always follow me on Instagram and go onto any recent post and comment the same sparkles that you did on YouTube channel post on this video and there you have another entry. I really hope you guys enter because this is going to be really fun for me to host yet another giveaway. So with that being said, thank you guys so very much for 2,000 subscribers. Your support really does mean the world to me and enough that mushy stuff. So let us get on to the flip through. So here is the final flip through. I'm obsessed with this lace and we'll definitely put it in more bullet journal setups in the future. Fortunately, alas, it is all done, but I really hope that you guys enjoyed the spread in this bullet journal setup that you got some good inspiration from it. As always, I'll be posting 
posting pictures on my Instagram in a few days. So go check that out. Follow me over there. And also check out my Etsy shop if you haven't already to grab some sticker goodies for yourself. If you've gotten this point in the video, you might as well just go subscribe because it's one of the requirements for the giveaway. <laughs> so, But also I post more bullet journaling and productivity videos every Saturday. So if you like things like that, this channel is probably perfect for you. And if you just can't get enough bullet journaling inspiration or if there was spreads I didn't exactly cover in this video, I have an entire video where I set up my first journal for 2022. So I'll have that linked right here on the screen and I will see you in that video. Love you guys. Toodles.